The next step is, and so here we are, we've accepted Christ, we have salvation, but, and everybody, in fact, some of the prosperity gospel that you hear, that, hear nowadays says, that's great, that's fantastic. We're at it, we're, you, you're you're going to live a life that's fantastic now. Hold on one second. That's, that's not correct. That, that, that easy living concept, just because you accept Christ does not mean that you have an easy life ahead of you. In fact, what it does is it draws a big bullseye right here center on your chest. And Satan goes right after you. But here's, here's where we go from there. Verse 29, it shows that in order to live that surrendered life, we must take that yoke upon us, the yoke of Christ. In fact, what we've got to do, when in it, 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 do you know what a yoke is? I'm not talking about the stuff in your egg. I'm talking about a yoke. The, 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 it's a huge beam. Usually it's about an eight by eight. It's heavy. You'll see some maybe old timey farmer pictures where, where it's strapped on cattle while they're plowing the field or pulling a wagon. Uh, the thing is, is that uh, the, those are, it's not meant to weigh them down, even though that is part of the purpose there. The, the purpose of the yoke is discipline, to, to aim, to control, to where there's a guiding lot of force upon those animals. But that's what we're looking at with the yoke of Christ on us. In fact, what, what we do, ironically, in this verse it says, okay, I want you to give me all your burdens. That's why this is Christ. Speaking. Give me all your burdens, and here I'm going to put another yoke on you. Now, some people sit there and go, wait, wait a minute, I'm trading this for this, I'm not too sure about that. But that's not really what he's asking for at this point. Actually, what he's asking for is, I want you to trade in your junk that clutters your mind. And it's, you can't look at yoke as burdens. It's actually, you're trading junk for accountability and responsibility. These, these are things which, again, counter to our culture. Accountability is frowned upon. We, we try to do everything ourselves, so therefore, why should we be accountable to anybody else? But that's not what Christ calls us to do. So here we are, we drop our burdens on Christ and we hand it over to, but we, we hand our lives and our leadership over to Him. Yeah, in fact, Matthew, here he is reading the book, and he's a pretty knowledgeable Jewish guy. He probably, as he was writing this, was thinking back to the book of Ecclesiastes uh, when, when uh, the, uh, the writer talks about what a heavy burden God has laid upon me. Men, I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless. They're, it's like chasing the wind. So therefore, you know, it, you know, we can continue to battle against all this stuff, but until we accept that discipline, the discipline of the yoke of Christ, we're just, we're just chasing the wind. Uh, it is here that we accept that discipline to live a life that Christ wants us to do. And that takes sacrifice. That's the part one, the part of the discipline that we have to, sometimes you leave behind an old lifestyle, old friends. In fact, one day you may wake up and realize that everybody that you used to know is no longer in your life. But I would almost guarantee you that the people that are in your life have a better impact on you and your families than any of the ones before. Even for those that have been Christians for a while, this is a struggle. Giving up things is not easy. Uh, the human, that you know, we're human. We always want to, me, me, me. It's always about us. We always want to keep things in those. That little, I'll give you this, but not this mentality uh, pervades us, not just in society, but right here in the walls of the church. Or even another one, and this is, this is the one that kind of really, uh, you know, it keeps people from handing over. But it's, I'll give this to the church, but please don't come ask me to volunteer my time, and don't ask for my checkbook. So th these are these are things we, we, we want to take a step, but we're not willing to give everything to Christ. True surrender is identified by whole life transformation. Transformation is not halfway. Transformation is a complete change. Habits are broken. Addictions are removed. Broken relationships are mended. These are steps that people see in a person's life when they are trying to when, when they are making that transformation. 
Discipline can also be seen with an active prayer life and scripture reading. And we're not talking about the get out of jail prayers that we do whenever you know something bad happens. We're talking about a constant relationship, communication with Christ. The, that is what he wants, that's what he asks for, and that's what we need in order to have a constant, a good, balanced spiritual life. Scripture reading, same thing. Don't go digging just because when you're looking for that key verse to, to make you feel better that day. In fact, if you continue to read Scripture and you continue to dig in the Word, I don't care how long you've been a Christian. The main key is, is that you'll continue to find wisdom in there for years and years and years. These are not just, prayer and Scripture are not just those things that you tick off in your day planner. In fact, when you, if you are one of those people like me that like to kind of ration out your day, they should be the first two things that you put in there. Not the last two things that you squeeze in into that 50 minute increment between washing your ears and brushing your teeth. Again, you know, with the prayer, with the scripture reading, you've got to understand that this is a way to nurture your faith. It is not just uh, something that you check off. It is a part of your life. This never changes again, no matter how long you've been a Christian, how mature you are in your Christian walk, because guess what? We are all needing more every day, every hour. The third step, uh, and it falls into with the discipline, and it kind of overlaps quite a bit, is, is following an absolute, uh, absolute, absolute obedience. Uh, obedience is a call to action in and of itself. Taking our faith and acting upon it. Spreading it to others, showing the light to other people, it's important that we have the right attitude with obedience. Obedience sometimes has a negative connotation because we're having to hand over control over it to someone. In fact, Charles Spurgeon once said, obedience which is not cheerfully rendered is not the obedience of the heart and consequently is of little worth to God. It is the intent of a person's heart, not the work or the action, it's the intent of the heart that will justify one before Christ as we look to have a closer relationship with God. If you're looking for trophies or little thing, pieces of paper to hang on your wall about how great you are, this is not the place for you. What we've got to look for are people that are willing to take up the shovels and the hammers and the work. Get your hands a little dirty to get out there and do the work of God. Prayer walking, volunteering at the local soup kitchen, that list is endless. We all know what they are. Unfortunately, it's hard to see it when we actually leave these walls on a Sunday afternoon. In fact, what we, get, what, we, what we look at here is we get to the end of Matthew. Christ, when he, when he was resurrected and he uh, left, he leaves us with that as a challenge, as a command, more than a challenge. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything. Not part, not something, not just what's cool in today's society, but everything. It is through this obedience, this complete handing over of control of our lives, that we can actually shine that light of Christ so that people really understand. If, if, they, if they are seeing us say one thing and act another, then the message is useless. That three, four hours that we spend on a Sunday morning is nothing. It's nothing more than social time. We've got to actually take the word and put it into motion or we are wasting that time. 